Eighteen's a funny age. It's a funny age. When I was 18, I was the vice president of my National Honor Society, the president of our volunteer club, and very facetiously named most likely to be the president of something. <laughs> when I was 18, I wore t-shirts that said Rebel Child of Conformity. All of my friends had one. And I took a cardboard cutout of Legolas to my senior prom. So president of the nerds, maybe. And when I was 18, a boy told me I was the ugly friend. <laughs> Just like that. I don't know why he said it. Maybe he was cruel. Maybe he believed it and wanted to make me understand my crime of having beautiful friends. Maybe he was a thoughtless person who said thoughtless things. I do not know. Toastmasters, members, guests, there are ugly, silly things that we carry around inside us. Things that someone said when we were 18 or eight or last week, small hurts and big hurts and hurts that seem so insignificant, we don't even know they are there until 10 years later we are weeping helplessly during a teenage movie called The Duff. <laughs> When this boy called me the ugly friend, I scoffed it off. Truly, I did. I was like, whatever. What a douche nozzle. Because <laughs> I was 18, and that's what you say when you're 18. What a douche nozzle. I'm awesome. And I grew up into a fairly confident, self-assured adult who thinks he has a great body men want to see naked. <laughs> Any single man? No. Okay. <laughs> and it was over. except it wasn't over. <clears throat> because on that day, he planted the seed of a hurt plant so deeply buried, I didn't even know it was there until 10 years later, I'm sitting in the movie theater watching the Duff. Duff stands for Designated Ugly Fat Friend. When the movie was over, I cried quietly. And when everybody left, I cried loudly, and then I went into the bathroom, and I cried until my entire body was shaking, and I couldn't cry anymore because that stupid, dumb teen movie resonated on such an unfair level. And it resonated because I remembered these things. I remembered being at a bachelorette party with four of my beautiful friends when we were approached by four men. That's four men, five women. I'm not very good at math, but even I know that's uneven. <laughs> So there was a really attractive guy, and he was talking to me <coughs> and to my friend. And I distinctly remember thinking, he probably wishes he was just talking to her. Mm. And I got up, and I went to the bathroom, and I excused myself from the situation. It resonated because I remembered when I moved to New York City, I had a very strict rule that I wouldn't date anyone who hit on my roommate, Lindsay, first. <laughs> She's beautiful. So when I met Darren, he so attentively hit on me and so intentionally ignored her, and I was thrilled. Uh, two years later, I was uh, out enjoying some adult beverages when I texted him with my best judgment, of course, thank you for never hitting on Lindsay. Two years later, that's how deeply buried and important that hurt seed had become. And so I sat there and I had this revelation. I felt profoundly sad for the part of me that listened to the words of an 18-year-old boy and truthfully believed that, that I wasn't good enough. That I was the ugly friend. That acted like I didn't deserve to be loved because I thought I was the ugly friend. And the good news is, with self-awareness can come change. So I said, I'm not the ugly friend. I am not the ugly friend. I am beautiful inside and out. I am not the ugly friend. I am beautiful inside and out. I said it again and again and again three times more. I am not the ugly friend. I am beautiful inside and out. I am not the ugly friend again and again and again seven times more, 18 times more. I am not the ugly friend. I said it like it was a pesticide that could kill that hurt seed buried inside of me. 
I said it like my future happiness depended on it again and again and again. I am not the ugly friend. I am not the ugly friend. I am beautiful inside and out. I said it like my future <coughs> happiness depended on it. It probably did. And when I went out, I said it every time I went out until I started to act like someone who believed they deserved the, to be loved. Somebody who believed that they were enough and somebody who believed that they were beautiful inside and out. And that is exactly what I want for you. Find your person. Maybe an old boyfriend said you were bad in bed. <laughs> not you, of course, not you. Maybe an old not boyfriend said you were bad in bed. <laughs> or a boss implied that you were failing. Or a well-intentioned friend made fun of you for being tall, or short, or slow, or unathletic. Or they made fun of your acne, your scars, your speech impediment, your limp. Someone somewhere used their words to imply that you weren't good enough. And on a subconscious level, you believe them. <coughs> Find your hurt seat. Wedge your nimble fingers beneath those twisted roots. Claw at it like your life depends on it. Like your future happiness depends on it. I can tell you from experience, it probably does. Truly, it probably does. And then pull that mother effing, not inappropriate language, <laughs> pull that mother effing hurt seed right out of your big, wonderful heart. <laughs> <laughs>